uh, hey everyone uh, thank you for joining in uh, for this presentation that is on disaster recovery in apache ozone i am sadaran chennai a software engineer at cloudera with me is my friend and colleague rakesh uh, we both work at cloudera and have been working on apache ozone for quite a while so let's get started so before we get into the talk uh, i would like to discuss the agenda of the talk so we would start with the uh, basically an overview and architecture of apache ozone uh, where for the folks who are basically new to ozone they would get uh, an understanding of how the components in ozone interact with each other also uh, we would like to we would discuss how or what happens when a user writes a key into ozone that is the right path of ozone uh, later we would also discuss about some of the features that ozone has such as high availability container replication ozone trash and how as to how a user can replicate uh, two ozone clusters as to how uh, i mean often times it happens that we need to maintain a second copy of uh, uh, of your cluster so in order to replicate as to how people can replicate ozone clusters uh, also at the end we would also discuss some of the optimizations made in the file system uh, in the ozone file system which uh, i mean betters a lot of operations in uh, such as rename deletes and makes it atomic and we would uh, get an insight of how uh, those optimizations were achieved okay. so yeah so what is ozone basically so ozone is basically a distributed object store its namespace comprises of volumes buckets and keys so uh, a distributed object store you can consider something like an s3 it has the concept of buckets and keys right so even uh, ozone has an extra concept called the volume an entity called the volume so its namespace basically comprises of these three entities so ozone started as an hadoop sub project uh, and uh, some time back it became a top level project uh, separation between namespace and block space layer so uh, the main difference differentiator between hadoop or the hdfs and ozone is that uh, hadoop has uh, uh, the hdfs stores most of the uh, stuff inside name mode that is the namespace i mean there's no uh, difference between, there's no clear separation between the block space and the namespace whereas in uh, ozone uh, we have separate component called the ozone manager that takes care of the namespace uh, which holds the metadata related to, related to the files directories or keys in general and the block space layer which we uh, call it as the storage container manager which has uh, or maintains data regarding the blocks that constitute those files and keys and as to where the locations of those blocks are so and container reports instead of block reports so in hdfs you might have heard of block reports that the data node sends to the name node but to uh, tell that it to i mean explain that it is alive and doing well in ozone we have something called the container reports a container is nothing but a larger larger block to say i mean a block by default in hdfs is of size 128 mb but here a container is of size 5 gb and uh, it's a larger block in general so that uh, the number of reports that the data node would send would decrease uh, so ozone can be accessed by either the object store the file system or the s3 api so basically by nature ozone is an object store but since it's a it can be a potential successor to hdfs we also have a hadoop compatible file system layer implemented over it uh, even for those users who want to use uh, the S3, who are familiar with the S3 interface and want to write data through it, they can do so by using the S3 API. So yeah, let's get into the architecture. So like I said, a user may write or uh, access Ozone via the Ozone file system, the S3 gateway or the Ozone CLI. So basically any writes would get transformed into remote procedure calls. Uh, suppose a user wants to write data, it will first contact the ozone manager uh, and the ozone manager will contact the storage container manager as to 
where uh, where it needs to write those blocks storage container manager will decide or will uh, uh, decide as to which data nodes to choose and where to write the blocks on so you can see these uh, and it will pick three i mean uh, the replication factor is three in general so it will pick any three data nodes and write uh, data to these containers that we discussed the replication is through uh, practice here and uh, we also have something called the recon server which is a reconciliation service that maintains like a bird's eye view of the entire ozone uh, it it also it also has a ui where we can uh, i mean detect or see as to how many keys uh, buckets and volumes are written into ozone so this is uh, uh, in general the architecture of how uh, uh, the apache ozone is so we would quickly see as to how what happens when a user writes uh, a key or a file so the user will try to create a key through one of the access methods that we just discussed so uh, the client will ask the ozone manager to create key for it the ozone manager will then try to uh, request the i mean create a request for the allocate block for that particular key that the client wants to write to the storage container manager the storage container manager then uh, decides a set of three data nodes on which the block needs to be allocated to and then it will reply back to the ozone manager with the block id of those uh, and the uh, data nodes uh, to which the uh, client needs to write to and the ozone manager will respond back to the client so once the client knows where it needs to write to or what data nodes it needs to write to it basically does these calls called the write check and put block so this is basically the buffering mechanism uh, through which ozone does writes so suppose a, a, a client wants to write a 10 mb file so we have uh, chunk boundaries or bound, buffer boundaries called a chunk that is uh, by default the size in ozone is 4 mb so at every 4 mb uh, a call called the write chunk is made on the client which uh, we can continuously write so if you say um, 10 mb we have two write chunks and uh, uh, that is 4 mb 4 mb 8 mb and the re remaining 2 mb also can be a chunk that is of 2 mb we also have a call called the put block call which updates the metadata in the container db and lets uh, uh, it visible to the db once the 10 mb write is complete the uh, the client can do a client has to perform a call called the commit key uh, which will uh, make the key visible to all the other users so this is how a basic uh, key write works in ozone so yeah so coming to the crux of the meeting so uh, whenever we talk about distributed system so failures are expected so if you see the graph here it uh, uh, clearly depicts the ad clearly depicts that as the number of nodes in the cluster grow the probability of data loss increases so why do these occur because of these occur because of different types of failures one of the type of failures that can occur is network failures there might be packet loss or routing issues that uh, might happen second type of uh, uh, failures are the node failures where the node itself might shut down due to power failure or any physical failures third is the byzantine failures so these are basically like uh, we have trust issues between the systems so that is two nodes or two uh, entities cannot uh, have an agreement with each other so such types of faults are called as byzantine faults so suppose we have things like uh, file checksum or the checksum which tries to ensure that uh, whatever we are writing is, uh, is fine so one of the uh, fix uh, i mean one of the things that we have to avoid such failures are checksums so so we will now discuss as to how we are trying to we have tried to make ozone resilient to failures by introducing some of the features so one of the features that we have uh, in ozone is that it is highly available so earlier we just had omha so recently we also have scmha in place and the entire uh, ozone is highly available now so so basically uh, the internal state that ozone maintains uh, that that is both ozone manager and storage container manager maintains their internal state 
via this embedded database called the RocksDB. So the internal database from from each of the system that is, if you say suppose take Ozone Manager, uh, suppose you take Ozone Manager, the state of the each OM has to be replicated three way, and this is replicated. This replication is achieved through a protocol called the RAC consensus protocol, which uh, and uh, the implementation in Java of it uh, in open source, we have a project called Apache Routes. We are using Apache Routes to achieve this. So basic, the basic principle is uh, that the client connects the leader, the leader processes the replic request and replicates the transaction to all the followers. And uh, once the uh, transaction is replicated, it returns a response to the client when the majority uh, of the followers have committed the transaction. So this is basically how uh, the principle for uh, HA works, both in case of uh, Ozone Manager and uh, the storage container manager. So we have a, a RAT server that is, uh, uh, I mean, we have a RATIS server. So basically, RATIS is a, a library. We can uh, Apache RATIS is a library that uh, the Ozone Manager uses, and uh, uh, we use that to replicate the internal state. Such as uh, Ozone Manager maintains a lot of uh, metadata, such as we can say uh, key table, uh, the related key table. Uh, and lots of other things such as uh, we also have things like directory table so all these tables are replicated or the are stored in the rocks db or uh, the entire db is replicated via uh, the raft consensus protocol or via the ratis uh, and the same uh, same concept applies to the uh, storage container manager too so this is how uh, we have high, high availability in apache ozone we also have uh, uh, what's called the container replication. So, like we discussed, uh, we have uh, larger units uh, than the blocks, which are of 128 MB in size. So, instead of blocks, we have something called the container, uh, where each container is of size 5 MB, 5 GB. Uh, so, all writes are three-way replicated. So, in case uh, there is a failure in, I mean there's a data loss issue in any one of the replica, we can still have uh, the other replicas to save us. So if you can see the diagram, so the bigger entity is the container. The container has blocks. We have uh, uh, the concept of blocks in Ozone too, but uh, basically the reports that the data node sends to the storage container manager are the container reports. Um, the block ID uh, is basically consists of the container ID and the local ID. The container ID is the container to which the block belongs to and the local ID and number to represent the lock. So once 5 GB of the container is filled, we actually close the container. And uh, if there might be cases where the closed containers have not been replicated because of some issue. So in case, uh, in those cases, replication manager is a background uh, process that runs in uh, storage container manager. It makes sure that all the container, all the closed containers are properly replicated. So yeah, let's get to ozone trash. So what is ozone trash? You might have already heard about the HDFS trash. So it is uh, very similar to that of the HDFS trash. So basically, it prevents accidental deletion of files and directories. Uh, it creates periodic checkpoint directories. Uh, I mean, if the uh, we have something called the trash interval and the checkpoint interval. So trash interval states that uh, the time to live of the uh, object that is of the file or the directory. So this is basically uh, in the context of the file system. So uh, trash interval is basically the time to live of the object that is of the file or the directory after it has been deleted. So uh, we also have an interval called the checkpoint interval. The checkpoint interval is basically creates a point in time checkpoints of the uh, deleted files. So suppose you deleted a, so suppose you set uh, the trash interval to 10 minutes and the checkpoint interval to five minutes. So, uh, and you deleted a file, uh, file A. So after five minutes, uh, the checkpoint would be created for those, uh, for that. 
and uh, after 10 minutes the checkpoint 2 would get deleted uh, we also have something called a skip trash if the user does not want to use the trash and wants to uh, delete the uh, file permanently uh, this is regarding ozone trash so if you see uh, uh, as to how the uh, working happens underneath so basically ozone trash is nothing but a rename operation uh, that is uh, we still do not remove the object or the key from the namespace uh, we just uh, when the user tries to issue a, a delete right we convert those those leads into renames and those renames are uh, we rename it to a directory called the trash directory which is at a bucket level so in case uh, so if a user is operating on bucket a so a, a directory called dot trash would be created in inside the bucket and whatever the user has deleted inside that bucket would get renamed to the dot trash inside that bucket so uh, uh, after the once the user has deleted we have something called the trash mtr thread uh, which uh, which is an om it's the service basically scans the eligible keys for checkpointing and deletion so if you can see the diagram here so we have something called the key table like we discussed in the rocks db of the om it maintains the uh, uh, metadata regarding the keys that have been written so if we have uh, keys uh, we just be in order to uh, see how the trash works we just scan the key table performing prefix based search to find the trash keys so we already know that uh, all the keys that have to be deleted are inside the dot trash folder so we just scan the key table based on the prefix that is dot trash we also know the bucket uh, bucket on which so this uh, trash mtr would basically iterate to all the buckets and uh, check what's the content of the dot trash folder and be, uh, based on that it would uh, uh, and the trash interval is general or a global interval to the om so uh, after that interval is expired it would do renames uh, to the checkpointed directories and respectively after the after renaming to the checkpointed directories it will also once the trash interval expires it would also delete the uh, uh, checkpointed directories so this is how uh, so a list of keys it would also uh, i mean it would scan the key table and give you a list of keys whose trash interval has expired and finally delete them once their trash interval has expired and finally then then the um, ozone block deletion process would trigger from there on from there on it would be difficult to uh, recover the keys so this is basically the flow if uh, there is a file called vol1 buck1 foobar.txt it would get uh, renamed initially when the uh, user triggers the deletion it would get renamed to this one vol1 buck1 and whatever the user uh, and uh, under his bucket and it would rename the same file inside the trash folder after the checkpoint interval has expired it will create a checkpoint uh, folder for that and once the trash interval gets uh, expired it will permanently delete the file so this is basically how trash works uh, so yeah so trash is one more uh, feature that uh, helps save accidental accidental deletion that is human error uh, that can occur through human error uh, one more uh, feature uh, or the uh, this is how we would discuss how a user can replicate data across clusters so in case uh, so a good backup strategy uh, or a disaster recovery strategy is to maintain a backup cluster uh, uh, and how a user can achieve this for ozone is uh, you can use the simple DCP to replicate ozone clusters. Um, we have the concept of bucket types. Uh, that is the op we have two types of bucket types right now, which is the object sure buckets and the file system buckets. Uh, these this part in detail would be explained later. Uh, we also have uh, the ozone file system, which was introduced in HBS 5996. So this basically helps in. Um, uh, incremental replication basically um, if we try to replicate the same folder twice uh, and we have four files in the first go and the five files in the second go 
uh, in the second go we would compare the uh, checksum and we would only um, we would only replicate the fifth file so we also have the ozone snapshot feature development in progress uh, which will uh, even help or uh, boost the uh, replication i mean the ozone replication uh, across clusters so snapshot feature is basically a uh, snapshot is basically a point in time copy of your uh, namespace so this would help in diffing the uh, diffing the files and uh, get uh, i mean optimize the incremental replication part so yeah so now my uh, friend and colleague rakesh would explain some of the performance optimizations made for the uh, operations like rename and delete basically uh, uh, trying to which will try to uh, better some of the even it would have an impact on the disaster recovery operations such as trash which is basically renames so yes uh, yes uh, i would hand over to rakesh hey uh, uh, thanks sadanand hey uh, everyone uh, i'll be talking about the some of the performance optimizations we have done in the ozone uh, past few months so what we have done from the architectural point of view is like we have categorized the buckets uh, ozone has volume and buckets and user can create several buckets and underneath the buckets a user can put their files or the keys so we have categorized the buckets into based on the use cases like a file system optimized bucket where we where, where a user can create a files and directories intermediate directories and in which respects 100% file system semantics and you can user can get a hierarchical namespace view efficiently similar to stfs also it provides the capabilities to read and write using amazon s3 uh, s3 client aws client and uh, there are two more bucket types one is uh, another one is object store bucket where it has a flat namespace similar to the amazon s3 and uh, there is no intermediate directories concept in this bucket and we have legacy bucket in place this is introduced basically to for the smooth upgradation let's say if there are pre created buckets and i am upgrading from one version to another version uh, how do those old buckets represents right so in order to maintain a smooth upgradation old buckets will be represented as legacy buckets and uh, this is basically completely on the client side client can uh, make a contract with ozone saying that hey i i would like to create a bucket with file system optimized or obs uh, namespace flat namespace or legacy bucket so this is completely owned by the, the client and client can set the attribute while creating a bucket yeah so then can you please move to the next slide yeah yeah so we'll we'll talk about the performance optimizations based on these bucket types right and one of the advantage with the bucket types is like we have provided a complete isolation between the buckets across the buckets let's say user 1 which operates uh, operations on obs bucket type it will not impact any of the operations on the fso buckets right so the complete isolation we have provided so these two buckets can be replicated separately independently of each other so user have the complete uh, flexibility on that and uh, like we so the trash operations right how how do the fs optimizations translated to to boosting the performance of the trash operations when somebody is performing a trash operations and somebody is deleting a directory what internally happens is like it has to maintain a strong consistency without any partial failures because there can be n number of files or subparts under that parent directory which is going to delete right so uh, in between if any network failures or any any packet loss or some those kind of uh, failures intermittent failures happens right uh, it has to ensure that all the underneath uh, sub subparts has to be properly cleaned up and it should give a consistent view to the users and that was one of the expectation for the fso and second one is like let's say when somebody is deleting a directory 
uh, if you look at HDFS, HDFS provides a deterministic performance. You can delete a parent directory, and and the the parent once you delete the parent directory, all the the child or subparts will get orphaned, and you user will not has the flexibility to access those subparts. So these are the two things considerations we have taken when designing the FSO optimizations, uh, and which helps trash uh, to achieve a better performance. Yeah, we'll, we'll see the next slide. Yeah, so how do we achieve the atomic directory renames? So now you can, uh, let's imagine, this is also namespace, FS namespace. Here you have a hierarchical view, like directory one slash directory two slash directory uh, three slash, you have one million files. And now let's say when user is trying to delete, and, and here you can see uh, how do we represent in the ozone manager. Ozone Manager has directory table and file table separately. And these two things backed up with the rocks DB. So you can add n number of directories and n number of files without worrying the, uh, the, the, the scalability issues. So how do we represent a directory? So we have used a prefix ID to represent the directories uh, instead of the complete path, like volume slash bucket slash uh, the directories what we have used is we have used the prefix id so if you look at the directory table entry the first entry the blue color entry is like 512 slash directory one and which has a unique object id generated 1024 and when i'm creating directory two uh, the second row represents like 1024 slash directory two and uh, same way directory three and underneath next table you can see like file table data format there also we we continue the same prefix slash prefix id slash the file name so now these two tables together represents the fs namespace file system name namespace and gives a hierarchical view when somebody is trying to perform a list operation on directory what what internally we does is like we will parse or we will traverse uh, the the rows the rocks db and find out what is the for example a user is listing directory one we will find out the entry in the directory table and then we'll get the the object id of that one and then we'll see uh, what are the, uh, the sub parts under 1024 slash we will get directory two and then it, it will be doing a top-down traversal algorithm so this is how the traversal is implemented and now comes to the delete what happens uh, sorry comes to the rename right sorry can you please yeah comes to the rename so what happens when somebody is renaming a directory one to directory one underscore in view so here we will be updating only a single row in the rocks db uh, directory table fighter slash directory one slash uh, underscore new so now the entire subparts will automatically get reflected and and now let's say somebody is asking get me uh, the list of paths under bucket one so now automatically the directory one is reflected to directory one underscore new so those will get traversed smoothly so within a single operation single rp using a single rpc code we completed the rename operation so that translated uh, performance boost to the trash operations yeah. so now we look at what happens when the trash expiry interval happens so it will it will it will delete that particular directory right uh, so now let's say the same directory directory one i am going to delete so now what happens is in generally what happens is like it has to delete all the subparts the same thing uh, the similar to the rename what we do is like we will be deleting the directory one entry from the rocks db and underneath all the subparts uh, or subdirectories becomes unreachable or orphans. So now directory deletes, we have the performance advantage or the performance benefit, plus we are maintaining the atomicity guarantees. Like we, uh, we are able to sustain any partial failures or network failures. So we will be completing in uh, a single RPC call, both deletes and rename operations. So eventually, these two translates a performance benefit to the to the complete trash as well as the replication features can you please move to and uh, there are a couple of items we have in future roadmap uh, definitely uh, the performance optimization it paid uh, it laid down the path to uh, to bunch of uh, new features into the system and there are bigger items are coming up and snapshot feature is one of the uh, the feature which is in pipeline and 
basically what it it supports is like it is supporting a bucket level snapshot or point in time snapshot and which has which has been implemented on top of the bucket types yeah so uh, i would like to thanks all the core contributors on on the entire ozone uh, features as well as the the contributors on on the trash replication and the file system operations optimization features yeah thanks thanks everyone yeah and uh, we have a beautiful community uh, which is very dynamic and vibrant please feel free to contact the ozone community for any queries or or welcome all contributions thank you thank you everyone